I was um, stopped for speeding in a school zone. And this young police officer, he was in his 20s, and he got my, my Danish driver's license, which is a plastic car that says EU on it, and it's totally international. He'd never seen anything like it and said, I, 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 I'm giving you a fine to her. I'm doing 104 in a, in a neon. <laughs> And I get pulled over. My heart is jumping out of my chest. I give him my license. He said, do you have anything in the car? And I was like, like what? No. <laughs> he said, okay, if I check your car and I don't find anything, I'll let you go. I had to get out the car. My roommate had to stand out in the field. I have gotten a couple of tickets. Thing When you're in Latin America, when you're in Africa, there's a lot of corrupt police and military. In some countries, you get pulled over basically every single day. And they'll just try to come up with any excuse to, to have you give them money. And usually they're just making stuff up. I had people tell me my tires were expired. A uniquely Montana thing. You get a lot of warnings. In college, I was late for work and I ran a red light and there was a police officer directly behind me. When I moved back from Oklahoma and I was living in New Jersey, which is where I'm from, but I still had my Oklahoma plates on my car. and. I was pulled over at one point where it was very clear I was kind of being profiled or stopped because of my out-of-state plates. So I was driving in South Africa with my Canadian license plate. So they took a photo of my Canadian license plate, but it's not like they're going to have my address on file. So I just used the tollways in South Africa for free. In Tajikistan, we got stopped by some kind of shady traffic cops who were trying to say that we were speeding, though we clearly weren't. And they actually aimed their, their radar gun at another car that was speeding. When I lived in Michigan, I was pulled over for speeding a couple of times. And my son, my younger son was with me in the car seat in the back. And when we drive past that spot, we'll say, Mom, remember that time that you got a ticket here? So he will not let me live it down. I do have one. I remember whenever I'm driving in a different country than my, than my own, I, I really try to always keeping the speed limits. But at some point when I was in North Carolina, I, I missed a flashing light and I was um, stopped for speeding in a school zone. It was not my proudest moment. And... At the time I was uh, house sitting and my house sitting host, she became a good friend of mine. And at some point when she was back at the house, we wanted to go to a, a network meeting because she's also quite a bit of a traveler. And I've been driving her car for, for a, quite a bit. And, and she said, oh, do you mind driving? I, I need to uh, answer some emails. So I was driving her car when I was stopped and he got my, my Danish driver's license which is a plastic car that says EU on it. It's a European Union type uh, standard driver's license and it's totally international. I've been renting cars with that in the US many, many, many times without an, anything specific saying international driver's license. I can totally do that uh, on this one. But this young police officer, he was in his 20s and he... He'd never seen anything like it. So he took it back to the, the squad car behind us and, and came back and said, I, I, I'm giving you a fine to her. He said, obviously, I'm getting a fine for, for speeding. That was only fair. But he gave her a fine as well for letting somebody drive her car without a valid driver's license. I said, no, 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 no. I've been, I've been renting cars in, in, and I think I even added, I've been renting cars for the last uh, 35 years in, in the U S so he could think, okay, before I was born. So I said, okay, I can totally do that. I, I, I can definitely do that. And then he went back to the car again and, and spoke to his superior and came back and said to her, well, um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you're not going to pay. I, I just didn't know. And we were all fine. And I. I paid my fine and then he said to her that she didn't have to do anything that it would be canceled but it never was and she got she got to pay a fine for for letting me drive quote unquote without a, a valid driver's license which was really not fair so that was one time i was pulled over and another time was uh, a more pleasant experience that was when I was getting close to Canada after a road trip in in New England, 
And just before the border, I stopped at a rest stop and I, I had an American SIM card in one phone and, and, and my other phone with a Danish number. So I was sitting in the car close to the border with two phones and a police officer came up because I was so close to the border and he was there to patrol anything suspicious. And he found it curious that I was sitting there with two phones and what's going on. But then when he got the story, it would, it all turned out fine. And we started chatting away for 15 minutes and he even told me where I can get some duty free liquor. And <laughs> so it, it, that, that turned out to be a really, really pleasant experience with the, the, the U S police force, but, but it, it varies. So this is before college. I graduated, I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and I ended up going to Michigan state and we had an orientation program. So drove to Saginaw, Michigan. It's about an hour away from Lansing to pick up a friend who's going to Michigan state. I rented a neon and I don't know how the rates are, but if you're 25 and under the rental cars are more expensive. So I'm eight and I know that it's expensive. I go pick them up. We go to the orientation and at the end of the orientation, I'm taking them back to Saginaw. I'm doing 104 in a, in a knee and I get pulled over. My heart is jumping out of my chest. Now this is, this is well before the social injustice of police officers. So I was only scared because I was afraid of a ticket, not because I thought anything was going to happen. So I get pulled over and the police officer comes to the door and he said, do you know why I pulled you over? At that time, I'm like, yeah, officer, look, I'm in a rush. I got to get back. <laughs> like, I'm trying to make it seem like it was warranted for me to drive that fast. I give him my license. He goes to the car and my roommate is in the passenger side. And he says, oh my God, <laughs> we really got pulled over doing 104 in a neon. And the guy comes back and he says, uh, I'm going to have to give you a, a ticket, but I'm going to have to... He had to hold some, he said I had to give him some type of money because I lived out of state to ensure that I was going to come back to the court. And I was like, I can't give you any money. I need to pay for this rental car. So he said, do you have anything in the car? And I was like, like what? No. <laughs> he said, okay, if I check your car and I don't find anything, I'll let you go. I had to get out the car. My roommate had to stand out in the field. The grass is really high. And it's hot outside. So just imagine seeing your roommate <laughs> on the expressway, but in the grass. He told him to go stand in the grass. He was like, all right, open up your trunk. So I opened up the trunk and it's just my backpack with my clothes. And was like, I need you to empty that out. So I empty it out. And then it's a bag of contraceptives that just falls out. And now he already knows that I'm coming from this orientation. And he was like, I guess you're really prepared for college, aren't you? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like trying to say anything for him to be cool. He, he was actually cool about everything. As soon as he sees that and we, we small talk, another police car pulls up. And now I'm a little worried. I'm like, what is going on? He says, wait here and I'll be back. He goes to the police officer and then he comes back and he says, hey, slow it down and make sure you stay safe when you go to college because I know you're prepared. And we got in the car. We might have did miles per hour on the way back. I was just like shook. I was like, oh my God. Because during that conversation, he told me that it was considered reckless driving and that he technically could have arrested me. And I had no idea. And I was like, what was I going to tell my father that I got arrested for doing it? I was blessed to not get a ticket. And Lord knows that day, I was definitely supposed to get a ticket. I was supposed to get something. But thank God that other police officer came because apparently it was something way more important than me. I have gotten a couple of tickets. I'm really proud though. I went a decade of my life before I got my first speeding ticket. And it, it is a strange thing when you're in Latin America, when you're in Africa, there's a lot of corrupt police and military. In some countries, you get pulled over basically every single day and they'll just try to come up with any excuse to, to have you give them money. And usually they're just making stuff up. I had people tell me my tires were expired. Oh, I, I crossed the yellow line when I didn't, or 
and they're just trying really hard. Like if you give them money, they're just going to put it in their pocket and take it home. It's not a proper legal ticket. And my most memorable ticket actually. So this happened all the way down the coast of West Africa. So I was like, I was in the Congo, Cameroon, and it was so wild and so remote. I crossed 17 countries, but my passport didn't even get scanned once because at all the border crossings, they didn't even have computers. They just write your name down in a book. They write it down with a pen. That's what the international borders are like. So it's really remote, mud and wild. And I hadn't seen development or technology for a year. And, and I felt like I was out in the jungle. And then I drove into Botswana, which is much, much more developed paved roads and, and proper gas stations. And, and I wasn't really paying attention to the speed limits. And I was driving in my usual make it up fashion. And so a policeman pulls me over. And he's wearing this uniform and he's got badges and a hat and a really nice police car. And I thought to myself, oh, this is all a bit more legit than what I'm used to. And my standard approach for getting out of a ticket, you let it go on for a while. And they're like, oh, you were speeding. You have to pay us $50. And so I talk for a long time. And then I usually say, oh, I don't have any cash on me because I'm really worried someone's going to steal from me. All I have is my visa card. And so I have to go to the bank to pay. So if you write me out a ticket... I'll go to the bank and I'll pay the ticket and, and I'm sorry. And 99 times out of 100, they'll then leave you alone because they don't actually want you to pay the ticket at the bank because then they don't get any money for their own pocket. What they really want is you to just slip them a $20 bill. And so once you make it really clear you don't have any money, they're like, oh, whatever, go away. Like we're not wasting any more time. And so, you know, I, I'm in Botswana and I let this develop for a while. And so I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. I just got into the country. I don't have any money yet. I need to go to the bank. And I held up my visa card. And so we're in what I think is the middle of nowhere. And this guy's like, no problem. He pulled out a wireless credit card machine on the side of a dusty road in Botswana <laughs> and processed my credit card. And I paid like a $50 fine on this wireless machine that apparently had 3G service. And <laughs> I just had to shake my head and be like, oh, I guess he got me. South Africa, the big cities have like really big freeways that have automated toll stations. And so it takes a photo of your license plate and you have to pay however much it is per day to use the freeways. But of course I was driving in South Africa with my Canadian license plate. So they took a photo of my Canadian license plate, but it's not like they're going to have my address on file. So I just use the tollways in South Africa for free. Well, I mean, I didn't know what else to do because I couldn't, I don't know, call up and pay and be like, oh yeah, I have this foreign license plate. I'm sure they'd be like, yeah, who cares? Yeah, so there's some advantages to driving a foreign car and having a foreign driver's license. And the other one I found out actually in Tanzania, the police also are really strict on speeding and they're always pulling you over and they have radar guns even, which again, felt like it was from the future. But what I learned is they have a little computer they have to type your driver's license into, and then that will issue you a ticket and then you have to pay it. But because I only had my foreign one, my driver's license number wasn't in their system. So they would type the number in and then the computer would say, no, that's not valid. So then they'd sort of stand around for half an hour and be like, uh, we can't write you a ticket. Okay, you can go. <laughs> So, so I, got, I got out of more than a few tickets in Tanzania that way, where they were just like, ah, oh, we can't give you a ticket. One of the things that comes to mind is in Tajikistan, in, in Central Asia, where we got stopped by some kind of shady traffic cops who were trying to say that we were speeding, though we clearly weren't. And they actually aimed their, their radar gun at another car that was speeding. And then they tried to say that it was us. So they were trying to extract a bribe from us. And of course we didn't speak Tajik or Russian and they didn't speak English, but they showed pointed to money and said, like, give us something. And we haggled with them for we were probably stopped for half an hour. And they got someone on the phone who spoke English and he was trying to say, well, okay, they want you to pay up. Otherwise they're going to take your license to Dushanbe, the capital and threatening us. And we kept saying, well, no, we weren't speeding and this is a scam. And we finally managed to get out of it by giving them a bottle of vodka as a bribe and they <laughs> let us go. But in, in a lot of these countries, when you, you know, travel through in, in the developing world, you, you 
come into my experience, you, know, you come upon a lot of kind of corruption and things like this. It's kind of inevitable sooner or later. When I moved back from Oklahoma and I was living in New Jersey, which is where I'm from, but I still had my Oklahoma plates on my car. And I was pulled over at one point where it was very clear I was kind of being profiled or stopped because of my out-of-state plates. They tried to say that I was, as I was driving down the highway, that I drifted a little bit over the, the line on the side. It was just ridiculous. And they kept me there for quite a while and made me get out of my car and, and were asking me all these questions. And they were asking me, okay, how come the, your middle name is different on your license? That They were just trying to get me for anything they possibly could. And eventually they couldn't and they let me go. It was just so dumb. And I'm sure it was because I had out-of-state plates, especially from a place like Oklahoma, which when you're in New Jersey seems yeah. totally far and it's not like Pennsylvania or Connecticut. A uniquely Montana thing is you get a lot of warnings. I don't know if that's how it is everywhere, but I, especially out on the highway, I think they know there's like no cars on the road. Everybody, including probably the highway patrolmen are going 10, 15 miles over the speed limit. So I've gotten pulled over a lot. I've, I've gotten, I, I should say I've gotten pulled over a lot. I don't know that I've gotten lots of tickets, but I have had some speeding tickets. The only time I got something other than a speeding ticket was in college, I was late for work and I ran a red light and I knew, I mean, I, I actively was like, okay, it was just changing. And I'm like, I just have to get through this light to get to work. And there was a police officer directly behind me. It was really dumb. He pulled me over and I pulled into a video store parking lot to get off of the main road. All I remember from the incident or the, the actual ticketing was when the police officer came up to me and there was a poster with Matt Damon, a movie poster. And, and I, it's like Matt Damon and he was, had his arms crossed and he, and that's just like burned in my mind. Like Matt Damon was shaming me and glaring at me and I was so mad at that poster. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I know. I ran the red light, Matt Damon. He knew what I had done. It might be a uniquely Montana thing. I've been pulled over. When I lived in Michigan, I was pulled over for speeding a couple times and I did get tickets there. I, I got a warning once though there too, but in Montana, I'm not sure I can even count. And the only time that I got a ticket in Montana, besides the running the red light that was in Montana was I was driving and I had my, I wasn't even speeding that much. Like all the times that I, they would actually give me a ticket. I was probably going maybe like eight miles over the speed limit, which in Montana and on the highways is hardly anything. And I got pulled over and there was no other cars for miles and miles and miles. It was this highway patrolman who honestly looked like he was 15. It was like his first day on the job and his face was all red. He was visibly nervous. He was shaking. And again, I sort of just felt like, oh, you poor, you poor kid. And uh, <laughs> he's like, ma'am, did you know you were speeding? And I instantly just felt so empathetic with him that I just like, yeah. And my son, my younger son was with me in the car seat in the back and he was probably three. And by the time I got back to home where I was driving to, I'd kind of forgotten I got a ticket. Like it's so commonplace for me to get pulled over that I just didn't even think of it. And my son walks in the door and the first thing he says to his dad is, Mom got pulled over and she got a ticket. And my husband was like, oh, were you not going to tell me this? And every time after that, my son would, he'd watch the speed and he'd be like, mom, are you speeding? Are you going to get a ticket? And we'd drive past that place. Mom, do you remember when you got a ticket here? And he's nine now. And he's still, when we drive past that spot, we'll say, mom, remember that time that you got a ticket here? So he will not let me live it down. Mm -hmm.